The Battle of Lejebche Field was a battle fought between March 30 and April 8, 1945, between the Croatian armed forces and Chetnik forces on the Lejebche Field near Banja Luka in what was then the independent state of Croatia. The Hos forces were led by General Vladimir Metikos, while the Chetniks were led by Lieutenant Colonel Pavlith Erezik. The combined Chetnik force was defeated by an NDH force. Chetnik leaders, Therizik, Zahari Justoich and Peter Bakovich, and ideologue Draghi Savasik were captured in an apparent trap set by the NDH forces and secular Dryovich after being induced to negotiate. They were then executed along with a number of Serbian Orthodox priests. Build up to the battle. In the fall of 1944, the Chetniks were scattered across the territory of the former Yugoslavia. Divisions of the Red Army had entered the territory of the military commander in Serbia and were assisting Yugoslav forces in capturing and destroying the Chetniks. The armed forces of the NDH were reorganized in November 1944 to combine the units of the Ustes militia and the Army of the Independent State of Croatia into the Croatian armed forces comprising 18 divisions comprising 13 infantry, 2 mountain, 2 assault and 1 replacement divisions, each with its own organic artillery and other support units. There were also several armoured units. From early 1945, the host divisions were allocated to various German corps and by March 1945 were holding the southern front. Securing the rear areas were some 32,000 men of the NDH Gendarmerie, organized into five police volunteer regiments plus 15 independent battalions, equipped with standard light infantry weapons, including mortars. Chetnik Plan When the German forces began to abandon Montenegro, the Chetniks decided to withdraw with them as there was little escape from partisan attacks in the region. Before they left, a command was issued by the Chetnik leader Drazim Mihailovic to head towards Bosnia where they would join up with an alleged number of 100,000 troops from Serbia. It was decided that the Chetniks would consolidate in the area between the rivers Bosna, Vr Bar and Sava. On December 5, 1944, Therizic's Chetniks headed north along the Drina River and met up with Mihailovic in the village of Kozua. With him were 10,000 soldiers, far short of what had been promised. Much of Mihailovic's troops in these final months were forcefully mobilized peasants from Serbia who frequently deserted. There are varying versions of what the Chetniks' further plans were. Later, Ustasar emigrants claimed that the Chetniks had sought to attack the Croatian capital Zagreb after the Germans had left. This would have destroyed the independent state of Croatia, and this would allegedly have shown the Allies that the Chetniks were a powerful anti-fascist army upon whom they could count on. Partisan sources say that Mihailovic sought to utilize Therizic's forces to return to Serbia to raise an anti-communist rebellion. Therizic did not accept this, refusing Mihailovic's commands. He then began to retreat towards Slovenia. Chetnik sources claim that Mihailovic commanded Therizic to head towards Slovenia to join with those Chetnik forces which would surrender to the Americans. Therizic's Chetniks eventually headed towards Lejevce Field near Banja Luka. Battle Beginning of the battle, the NDH forces which were located in the region numbered 27,940 soldiers. On March 30, Chetnik forces passed the river Vr Bar and took the village of Razboj. From there the Sanjak Chetniks headed towards the Sava River and the village of Dolanama on the road toward Bosanska Gradeska. At the same time, three Ustasar companies from the 10th Ustasar Brigade commanded by General Metikos headed out from Banja Luka towards Gradeska and took position near the village of Gaunt Dolin. There they battled with the Chetnik forces. With Chetniks in greater numbers, the Ustasar companies were forced to retreat. Concurrently, the local Croatian population began to flee the area towards Gradeska in fear of the Chetniks. 
On 2 April, General Metikos along with the 6th Croatian Infantry Division attacked the Chetniks not far from Gornja Dolin. After half a day of battle, the NDH forces forced the Chetniks to withdraw. They had also captured a Chetnik officer, Captain Mijikovic. He was a Montenegrin by background, a supporter of a Montenegrin independence as well as a follower of Secular Drajevic. Mijikovic did not agree with the Chetnik ideology and he gave the Ustisar officers information about the intentions of the Chetnik command. Attack on Bosanska Gradiska is foiled from records. General Metikos and the commander of the 17th Croatian Infantry Division, General Marko Susik, made a decision towards a quick attack against the Chetniks. General Susik moved an armoured group that same day from Novska as well as an artillery group from Novogradiska and two infantry battalions. Generals Metikos and Susik met in Bosanska Gradiska and discussed a plan of attack. The 5th Battalion of the 10th Ustasar Brigade was sent to the town of Erbako to guard against any possible partisan attacks. That same day at noon Ustasar artillery fired on the Sanjak Chetnik Corps. At the same time, the Ustasar armoured group with 24 armoured vehicles and four Panzer IV tanks entered Dolin and began to fire their machine guns at the fleeing Chetnik troops. After an hour the battle was over. The armoured group captured 400 Chetniks, among them some officers, while on the field of battle lay 2,000 dead or injured Chetniks. During questioning of the captured officers, the Ustays found that the Chetniks were planning to attack Bosanska Gradiska that very day. They also established the makeup of the Chetnik force. The Sanjak Corps led by Captain Kalahitovic, the Drina Corps led by Voivoda Draskovic, as well as 5,000 Montenegrin Chetniks led by Voivoda Bosco, a gram. They also found that the Chetniks had received help from the Germans to get there. Disruption of Chetnik command because of the unexpected loss of their forward troops. The heads of the Chetnik forces came to a spat and even some armed conflict erupted between officers. However, this only intensified the dissatisfaction of the Montenegrins who were forcefully mobilized and who did not want to fight for a greater Serbia. Just as Captain Mijikovic had foreseen, 5,000 Montenegrins deserted the Chetniks in the following days and defected to the Ustasar. This forced Thurizic to change plans. On 3 April he made the decision not to attack Bosanska Gradiska nor Banya Luka, but to take the remaining Chetnik forces across the VR bar, to take Lijevce field and the villages of Topola, Dubrava and Maglajan. There they would care for their provisions and horses, and begin to head across Mount Kozara towards Kordun where they would meet with Thujik's troops from Slovenia. On 4 April Jurizic decided to break through the NDH ranks. In the meantime the NDH forces had built and strengthened bunkers on the road from Bosanska Gradiska to Banja Luka. The building of the bunkers was overseen by the engineer Lieutenant Colonel Jarzik. In the bunkers were placed troops from 4th Jaeger Brigade. Every bunker was armed with a mortar and a machine gun, while each crew numbered 30 soldiers. The bunkers were situated at the intersections of roads. Novotopoli, Gorniatopola, Maglajan and Lactitian were all fortified. On 40 kilometers of road 22 bunkers were built. In Lactish, one armoured group and two infantry battalions stealthily moved towards the road near Razboj. General Susik placed one armoured group towards Donji Doljani, deployed a battalion with a motorised infantry and a tank company behind them in the village of Bukovac. A battalion under Major Anti Vaban was sent towards Vilas to protect against a partisan attack from Kozara. Main battle at 2 a.m. on 5 April, the Chetniks began a frontal assault on the bunkers, showering them with hand grenades and infantry gunfire. The NDH troops in the bunkers waited until the Chetniks came close, so then opened fire with their machine guns and mortars which resulted in high losses to the Chetniks, as well as confusion among their ranks. This lasted for the remainder of the day and into the night. Chetnik Mihailo Minyik later recalled the battle with these words, 
The Valley of Lejebche field echoes with the thunder of exploding grenades and hand bombs. Ustasar tanks snorted and sowed fire on all sides. Night turned to day, however, at 6 a.m. on 6 April, Chetnik forces under Captain Perisic succeeded in penetrating between bunkers and attacked the NDH 3rd Battalion from behind. General Susik with part of his own division blocked the Chetnik penetration point, and sent two tank companies to the road from Bukovac to Turjak to help the 3rd Battalion. With his remaining troops Susik set off to hunt down the Chetnik group, which numbered about 1,000 troops. Soon the tank companies reached the 3rd Battalion and commenced their attack, killing approximately 500 Chetniks, while the survivors retreated towards Kozara. The 3rd Battalion, strengthened by the arrival of the armored units, then set out to find the remaining 500 Chetniks. Two days later a battalion from the 4th Croatian Infantry Division under the command of General Zdenko Bigot came across these fleeing groups and completely destroyed the unit. During the night of 7 April, due to the attacks by the NDH forces, Panic struck the Chetnik ranks all the way up to the top command and the forces began to flee across the VR bar with the intention to spread out into the forests. In the morning NDH artillery began to fire at boats attempting the crossing and in this way halted the Chetnik retreat. At this time, Yugoslav partisan forces began a troop build-up near Bosanski Petrovac and Sanski Most. As the NDH forces did not wish to fight a battle on two fronts, the commander of the 4th Division Josip Metzger decided to launch a final attack on the remaining Chetniks who numbered approximately 7,000. At 11 a.m. the 6th and 7th Croatian Infantry Divisions began to attack those Chetniks who had gathered around Razboj, over Delina and Glamakani towards Razboj turned the 1st Armoured Group led by four Panzer IVs, along with a motorized artillery company and motorized infantry. Another armoured group headed down the Brezoviani glamakani Road. From the south the armoured group from the 6th Division chased the Chetniks from Kuko towards Razboj. Behind them came a motorised artillery company and two infantry battalions which began a frontal battle with the Chetniks. The NDH troops left their bunkers and returned sharp machine gun fire, under the onrush of NDH tanks and armoured vehicles. The Chetnik right flank was crushed and NDH forces circled to the their rear and began to attack with machine gun fire. The Chetnik Drina Corps began to crumble while Chetnik forces tried to close the NDH penetration. Under ceaseless fire from the NDH force accompanied by hand grenades, panic spread across the Chetniks. The Chetniks began to abandon the posts and attempted to flee, but they did so in vain as they were surrounded on all sides. The NDH infantry destroyed the resistance of the Chetniks, who soon surrendered. At 1 p.m. the battle was over. The Montenegrins who had earlier deserted the Chetnik ranks buried the dead. The spoils of war were great, 5,000 Chetniks were captured, among them Thurizic who had hid beneath the carriage hoping to escape by nightfall. He had to be closely guarded to ensure the Montenegrins did not kill him. Aftermath 5,000 Montenegrins were moved to Sizak, where they were left armed and placed under Rustasar command as the Montenegrin People's Army. In May 1945, these troops were among NDH forces, as well as Croatian civilians, who retreated at war's end towards Austria, attempted to surrender to the British but were refused and were instead repatriated to Yugoslavia from Bleiburg, Austria. Many were killed by the partisans during the return trip, with those survivors being interned at various POW camps.